This is part two of a really deep chord tone soloing lesson series. Link to part one is in the description where we did a series of exercises to memorize chord tone shapes, uh, arpeggio shapes over a jazz tune. And you can do this over any jazz tune. This is part two where we're gonna apply it to the music in real time, a series of drills and exercises that anybody can do to gain extreme clarity on where chord tones are within a chord progression on the guitar, finding the voice leading, truly improvising original music, it's gonna be good. Let's dive in. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely with improvisation, arranging, chord melodies, theory mastery, uh, chord construction all over the guitar. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I do videos every week. Let's outline the lesson that we're gonna do here. We're doing exercise five through nine because part one, which again, there's a link in the description, part one, we did exercise one through four, and I'll put a link in the description to my scales improvisation series where we did all of these same exercises, but with scales. So if you're really serious about this, you'll be unstoppable if you work on uh, the scales version and the chord tones version. Exercise five in this lesson, we're going to work on out of time eighth notes and I'll demonstrate everything and give you all the parameters and the rules and everything. Just want to outline for you first. Exercise six, we're going to do in time over a backing track with constant notes. And we have to test out of each of these before moving on to the next one. Exercise seven, we're going to continue to play constant notes. And this time we can actually improvise. We don't have to go one direction. We can uh, change directions. And it's going to start to sound at this point like some pretty cool uh, serious jazz licks that are just coming out of our hands that we haven't memorized, but we kind of memorized all the connections between the chords. Exercise eight is what I call the you're doing it exercise because as soon as we just break up our phrasing after we've drilled all of this stuff, it truly is uh, fluent chord tone improvisation. And from there we can uh, start to find our own voice more, go outside of the key, um, add chromatic notes or something like that. But this core information, oh, it sounds so good on its own. And then the last exercise is not really an exercise. We're just going to revisit the melody of the tune that we're doing in this series to show how this chord tone practice can clarify that melodies are usually targeting chord tones perfectly. And we're going to have a better sense of the actual tune that we are working on. Oh, it's going to be good. If you want to uh, jump to seeing how it all works in the you're doing it exercise, um, that's exercise eight. And there should be a timestamp outline in the video. Just saying that because the result that we get to by doing these drills is really, really worth it. And the drills up front can sound kind of mechanical. Um, and after the final exercise in this lesson. I'll have a little bonus tip at the end that will help you kind of helping people get through one of the roadblocks that happen when we work through these exercises that uh, have come up for me teaching this to people in private lessons. So anyway, without further ado, uh, let's dive in. And actually with a very quick further ado, you can get all the diagrams that we're using in this lesson and any diagrams you need for arpeggio shapes, the, the chord tone shapes for any chord that you need to improvise over any jazz progression, that's what we're using in this lesson. You'll see them on the screen and you can download those for free for any chord. 12 chord types shows all the positions and shapes of all these chords that you can use for any progression. There's a PDF you can get with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Now quickly, let's review what we did in part one. In case you wanna just watch, this video should stand on its own, uh, but part one, we went over the melody. We need to know the melody. We'll play that again at the end of this lesson. We're playing Solar, and you can apply this to any tune. Exercise one was just making sure we know the theory spelling of every chord we're working on. Exercise two was that we wanna find the arpeggio shapes, the chord tones in one position, as close to one position as we can on the guitar, so we see them all overlapping with each other and how they connect. Exercise three was to play each of those arpeggios up and down and test ourselves out of playing them up and down each flawlessly 10 times each. We need to really have them down. And then exercise four was to play those arpeggios through the order of the tune, not in time with the tune, but just in the order of the tune. We're starting to get a sense of how the harmony is changing. Now in this lesson, it's the fun stuff. We're gonna really apply it to the tune. So let's go over what I call the rules of the game. And this is just setting up the very strict and clear parameters that we're gonna to use to uh, drill this stuff. If we don't set up rules and parameters for ourselves with difficult areas of study like this, then we will just start to meander. We'll start to uh, just kind of play whatever we want and we can 
sound good that way we can find stuff that sounds good but we don't break out of our comfort zone and we don't gain new skills unless we set ourselves these rules and we try to stick to them and we try to test ourselves out of them by doing what we've set out to do a certain amount of times in a row so you'll obviously see what i mean as we demonstrate through all of these here is here are all the rules that we're going to follow for these exercises by default we follow these rules unless a specific exercise says that there's an exception and you will see as we go through the exercises but by default here's what we're following play chord tones only because we're working on chord tone soloing you will be tempted to connect things chromatically go outside of it a little bit yes do that on, on separate time separately later but for this exercise series to get it down stick to chord tones only next rule we want to play constant notes we're going to be doing some out of time and some in time out of time constant notes we're going to treat as eighth notes which means we can play out of time but we just count eight notes fill up a measure and that's that's one of our first exercises so you will see if we're in time constant notes are any note duration but constant you can play quarter notes eighth notes triplets 16th notes you can switch between those but you have to keep playing constant notes even if it's quarter notes and really slow you're still playing constant notes this is an absolutely critical skill because yes it sounds good to pause and have phrasing in our playing and have pauses in a real musical expression we want to do that but we don't want to do it because we lost sight of where we were right because we lost our place so in our drilling we want to be able to always know where that next good note is that next target note is so in our exercise practice here we want to play constant notes so we prove to ourselves that we have all of that down next rule by default we're continuing in the same direction uh up in our position and then back down when we get to the edge so if i'm going up this g minor seven arpeggio shape once i get to the top i turn back around when i get to the bottom you turn back around and the the chords are changing within that but in general you're going one direction at a time except for when we resolve backwards we, we are going to often resolve backwards and then keep going the direction that we were going okay so first i'll say always resolve by half step if possible okay if that's backwards or forwards if you can resolve by half step you resolve by half step so this c dominant seven resolves backwards to f okay that's the third so one and two and three and four and one measure of c dominant seven that's the resolution note right there Okay. Now I would keep going the direction I was going and there's only one note left and then I turn back around and keep working on it. You're going to see all the, all of these examples, but resolve by half step at all times when you can, when the last note you played before the chord change, there's a, if there's a half step away to resolve to the next one, you do that. Okay. If there is not a half step ahead of you, we want to, by default, resolve backwards. This just sounds more musical. Uh, it, these kinds of rules, these, the half step resolution resolving backwards uh you'll hear that it sounds like actual it well it is actual licks that we are playing we're just ingraining the core ingredients of of real licks without memorizing them as licks and you'll see as you practice this and as you as you hear as i do the demonstrations mm -hmm. so by default if moving forward is not a resolution by half step between chords we resolve backwards so here's an example we'll do the g minor 7 to c7 so one and two and three and four and okay one that is a g minor 7 off of the flat three the next chord is c7 okay well if i kept going the same direction i could go to the root of c7 here okay and i ended here and i want to resolve backwards to the third of it here whether it's the root or the third or whatever that's less important than knowing okay there's a whole step away the direction i was going and there's a whole step away backwards hear how that sounds more like a lick than that that sounds good too but that really moves us back and then we'll continue going that same direction that we were going so if you cannot resolve by a half step moving forward you always by default resolve backwards uh the whole step or half step if it's there okay next rule if you can't resolve by step between chords from the last note you played okay consider this is very cool this is what makes it sound more like licks as well consider the second to last note that you played as the note that is resolving okay this is very common jazz vocabulary um way of playing Okay, you want to resolve the second to last note by step, uh, half step or whole step in 
following the same rules, uh, but really either direction, anywhere you can resolve that second to last note. So here's an example. Uh, G minor seven, again, to C seven. So I'm gonna go one and two and three and four and, okay, G minor seven. Next note is, the next chord is C seven. Okay, but I cannot resolve to C seven a whole a half step above or below or a whole step above or below. Okay, here's the next chord tone of C7, it's a minor third away. Okay, here's the next chord tone of C7, it's a minor third down, but that, second to last note, ah, if you listen to jazz, that should sound familiar. Whoops. That's a very common vocabulary thing. Okay, I'm reminded of a lick by Wes Montgomery. That's literally a West Montgomery lick from uh, D Natural Blues. Same thing, right? Moving up and then resolving the second to last note by half step. Just happened to be that same thing. Okay, so the second to last note will resolve when you cannot resolve by whole step or half step from the last note you played. It's gonna be very useful, okay? If you can move half step both directions, you can choose either one. Doesn't matter, okay? So here's D flat major one measure of D flat major. I ended here, the next chord is D half diminished. That's the root of it. That's the flat seven of it. Either side, you can just resolve to either of those. Uh, sounds good. Okay, uh, so either direction, if you can, if you're in between two half steps, then it's great. You have great voice leading either way. Okay. Few more things here. Don't get caught in a rut. This means that if you find yourself cycling through the progression and you're landing on the same note again at the beginning every time, you wanna switch up your rhythms. This is if you're playing in time. So do a triplet, slow down to quarter notes. If you're on, you know, do something to make it be not the exact same path that you were on the last time uh, through. What you will find though, is that there are only so many connections and that you're just memorizing how to navigate every chord change you're going to end up playing the same things in many, many, many places. You just don't want to do a string of all the exact same path, right? Between in each individual chord, when you practice this, you're actually going to practice all of them a ton, all of the connections, and they will kind of feel like a bunch of little licks that you have to memorize. So there's two measures in this tune of F major seven. So if I'm in a rut, I might a couple triplets to make sure that I get out of playing the exact thing I played last time, say if I was playing all eighth notes before. Okay, moving on to a few more rules here. Next rule is no looking at the progression, no looking at the chords. You have to have this memorized. Uh, we're going to be ideally using a backing track. You can just do it with a metronome if you want, but do not look at the chords. Okay, you want to have it memorized. Next uh, rule, you can slide into notes as grace notes, but don't give them their own rhythm. Okay, so if I do for F major seven or or duh, duh. instead of that, I'll just slide as a grace note. Uh, that's something you can change later. That's kind of adding chromatic notes into it, but I just think it's a uh, it's a good thing to adhere to to keep the control of sticking with chord tones. So I like to slide into notes, but I'm not giving that note I'm sliding from its own rhythm. Okay. Uh, to pass each exercise, we need to do them a certain amount of times through the tune or a certain amount of times correct without making a mistake. And this will add up to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of practice. And uh, it could be certainly frustrating. It's, this kind of stuff doesn't come quickly, but uh, it really is truly amazing practice. And so you just let it over many, many sessions slowly get there because you have such a clear roadmap, all of these rules. Okay. Next rule, if you literally cannot resolve by step from the last note or second to last note, then this will just happen very rarely, very occasionally, then just move on in the same direction you were going. Okay, that's not gonna happen that often, but depending on the progression, that could happen. You just can skip to whatever next chord tone there is in the uh, direction that you were going. Okay, when you're playing in time, this is the last thing. When you're playing in time and you make a mistake, we want to start over. We need to get it a certain amount of times right in a row. But when you make a mistake, instead of just starting over, because this really takes a lot of drilling, you want to stop where you messed up, find the connection you missed, and out of time, play 
the through the rest of the progression okay and our first exercise is out of time so you'll get used to how to do that okay so if i go like c minor in this progression i'm working on here and i that's my last note there one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then i'm like ah oh, shoot i already messed up instead of starting the progression over and mess and uh we're just gonna front load it too much and play too much on that first chord. So always finish the progression off out of time. Stop the playback or stop the metronome. Say, okay, where's the connection? Ah, it's here. Okay, and here's a... Okay, so that was very fast because I've done this a ton, but that was me technically out of time, even though it's kind of in time, just saying, oh yeah, let me follow the entire path through the whole rest of the progression and land, and then then I'm going to start where I landed. Okay, so even if it's where I landed before, I'm gonna say, oh, if I did successfully do that, I would have ended up here. Cool, I'm gonna start there. And then start the actual backing track again and try to do it from there. You'll see me do this as examples. So lots and lots of stuff. So here's my last thing I'm saying. This is not a rule, but please know our conclusion here from all of these rules is that if you even roughly follow these, if you even approximate some of this practicing, even some few little elements of this, you're making huge improvements, right? This is just the rule book for this, these exact exercises. We have to have rules for where to go, uh, when we're in certain spots, how to resolve, et cetera, et cetera. It all comes together really nicely. But even if you just approximate this and try to do some of this and get out of your comfort zone, you're probably doing some of the most quality practice you've done in a long time. And if you want this result, if you want this goal to actually uh, target chord changes as they move by and do chord tone soloing as a foundational skill in jazz guitar improvisation, then it's 100% worth it to let it be as hard as it is and let it take as much time as it is. But even if you take one little element of this, you're golden, it will work. You're gonna make huge progress, okay? So let's dive into me demonstrating, walking you through the exact exercises. Here we go, here's exercise five. Exercise five is the foundational skill for all of this, and this is out of time, constant eighth notes through the progression, following all those resolution rules. So what we're practicing here, we've already played all the arpeggio shapes. We've already drilled those up and down. We're practicing the connections and we're letting ourselves take as much time as we need. It's out of time. Okay, so, uh, and we wanna get this through the whole tune 20 times in a row. Believe me, it needs to be, it can't just be 10 even. I did this uh, in the past on tunes with, I got 10 in a row right and i was like great awesome and i moved on to playing in time and i wasn't ready for it uh so at least 20 in a row of this it's quite nice though this is the most important skill so if i go if i start here in the progression we're doing here on solar and i go uh one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's how we count two measures of c minor and i'm doing the c minor triad arpeggio over c minor major seven which i explained in part one why i'm doing that um okay now i'm here and I'm on my way up. Where's the connecting note? It's right here for the next chord, G minor seven. Here we go. One and two and three and four and, that's the example I gave earlier. Here's C seven. One and two and three and four and, ah, okay. I went, well, I can resolve by a half step from the second to last note. So that's right there. Oh, it sounds so good. Check it out in time. Sounds like a lick, right? But we're just following these rules and ingraining it. Okay, now I'm on F major seven for two measures. So I'm just gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and kind of rush through playing the chords because the connecting part is what we're working on. Okay, so I landed here, so F minor is next. Okay, well, I can move from the previous note the second to last note, half step here, and it's gonna sound great because that makes it minor. One and two and three and four and, okay. B flat seven is next. I could go up a whole step or down a whole step. So my rule is that I go down a whole step. B flat seven, one and two and three and four and half step up to the root of E flat. One and two and three and four and half step up. One and two and half step down. One and two and half step down from the second to last note. And two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So yes, that probably seems fast because I've done it a ton, but the first time you do it, 
you 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 know scratch your head and sit there and and you play up and down the arpeggio until you get to that final eighth note out of time and then you say where's that connect where's the answer where's the connecting note oh there it is okay and don't repeat that don't just memorize it don't actually memorize it physically because the thing we want to practice if you do that you are not practicing what you need to the thing we want to practice is knowing where we are and where the next connection note is by ear by fretboard by theory by yes physically but not because we memorized a sequence of things and our hands just do it okay so don't do one mess up and then say oh, okay let me get that drill it drill it drill it drill it right the first connection you get so uh where did we end up here we went okay so i landed on the same note as we started on before so every time you restart in this out of time one you're gonna count you're gonna have 20 pennies marbles picks a counter a tally mark whatever you mark for yourself boom that you did one of them okay and you're gonna get a second one uh, and if you actually totally mess up and get lost, you start over the, start the count over, but there kind of isn't that as long as you stick with it. Cause you're just like, where is that? But if you get totally off, you have to start all the way over. You want to get 20 in a row. Uh, that's important rather than just 20 total at some point. Um, okay. So I landed here. So I'm going to start now every time when I'm doing out of time, I'm going to start on a different note. So I'll start on this one. Okay. See where it ends up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Nice, I get to go down a half step. Really nice voice leading there. G minor seven. One and two and three and four and C seven. One and two and three and four and half step up. F major. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, I'm gonna cheat and go out of the arpeggio shapes because this is just asking for the flat three right there. That's the one time I go out of the the shapes that we learned. Flat three. One and two and three and four and. Okay. Second to last note resolving down. One and two and three and four and. Second to last note resolving up. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and. Uh, three and four and. Boom. Um, so the little path that I got on at the end was the same as last time. And that's okay. That's going to happen. You're going to realize, oh, here I am. If you're sticking with eighth notes, you, there are going to be paths that happen. Don't drill them on purpose get them down because you've done them so much in the exercise okay so you follow through the whole thing so if i'm here on d flat major seven one and two and three and four and d half diminishes next where 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 you have to see the layout of the chord tones boom it's right there one and two and next chord it's moving along very quickly and where would the g7 be one and two and Okay, well, G7, the chord tone would be here, whole step up from the previous note. Okay, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle because I know, okay, I can't resolve this way. There's nothing there. I can't resolve this way. So imagine just having to think that way on the fretboard. You're going to know. You're going to be like anywhere I am, at least in the position you chose. And this translates easily to the rest of the fretboard. But any position I chose, like you're you're forced to figure this out and if you ever wondered how do people know where all the chord tones are it's because of taking the time to do something like this so that's exercise five get that 20 times in a row let's move on to exercise six it gets more and more fun each time exercise six is incredibly hard but this is the real deal this is where we put together all the rules we talked about in time through the tune we just want to be able to do this five times in a row through the tune i have my uh app here iRail pro the playback thing set for five repeats so i don't have to count i'm just gonna go five times through the tune and then i know i did it this is really really hard and remember if you make a mistake pause and follow the rest of the path out of time so you get more out of time connection practice than you try it in time again uh this is where i said even if you approximate this even if you work on it a little bit and don't master this or don't get it five times in a row you're going to notice a huge difference in your actual playing hopefully that shows you how beneficial it is and then you'll go back and try to get the five times in a row uh but any milestone you want i'm just giving you recommendations for how many times let's hear this in time <laughs> Thank you. 
messed up. Okay, so then when I mess up, I would go, um, okay, I was right here, uh, E flat minor seven. Ah, uh, here it is. Cool, I'll finish it off and then start again. So I got, I did one time through and I messed up, I think on the second time. Uh, so wanted to, that's good that I demonstrated that. I've done that five times in a row on this tune at that tempo, but that doesn't mean I can do it every time. So part of this is just trust yourself. It doesn't mean you can do it perfectly every time. That is plenty to get it down to move on to the next steps, right? If you, the fact that I got it five times once, even if it was by luck, it's like, okay, I got it in me enough to move on to the next one and it's gonna get more and more fun. Let's do the next exercise. Okay, the next one is great. This is exercise seven. This is constant notes still, all similar rules, but this time we can play any order, any direction, and we don't even have to do the resolution things. We just wanna play constant chord tones, period. Constant chord tones, any note duration. You're gonna to want to do those resolutions if you got the previous exercise down. Those are gonna come into your playing, uh, resolving by half step where it's possible, stuff like that. But constant notes still, but we can play any notes. Let's give it a go. Five times in a row is what we want out of this. You get the picture on that. A lot more freedom, a lot more freedom, really fun. I've also done that five times in a row and you know, you're still gonna mess up sometimes. And the mess ups, great. We don't wanna make our playing uh, perfect. We want to work out at the gym in this way and then go play and let the mistakes happen in our real playing. Um, and we kind of recover from them and find that's where some of the coolest stuff happens in real improvisation. So remember, we're just, we're working out, right? We're getting the fitness and the skill and getting out of our comfort zone to practice with these with these rules. So hopefully you can hear there like, oh, it's coming together as a little more musical and a little more fun, right? You have a lot more freedom and can take advantage of all the drilling that you just did. Let's do one more exercise where the next one is called, you're doing it because we are just gonna add phrasing to it. You can do anything you want and it's gonna be awesome. Uh, let's do that. So this is exercise eight in this series. Again, it's called the You're Doing It exercise. And we wanna try to get this 10 times in a row through the tune. It's way more chill, because you can pause all you want and uh, you can connect however you want. Still, we're only playing chord tones on purpose. That's the one main rule here. Let's do this. So yes, still limited in some ways because we're practicing chord tone improvisation, but combine that skill, combine that with anything else you want to sound like. Transcribe some master jazz musician and yeah, they're probably not doing that because that's so basic following the chord tones, but you will see 
how they are targeting chord tones and you'll see how they are playing around the harmony and you'll be able to learn that faster and understand and hear it better and all of that stuff so yeah we're working on a core kind of foundational thing i like the sound of it too and our goal is to be able to do that and enjoy what we're playing okay so if we can't do something that's kind of tasteful phrasing and hit only chord tones uh that's a problem right how why would more notes make it better right yeah you might want some weirder chromatic stuff but you should be able to play something tasty that you can do the last step here is just to revisit the melody because we worked on the melody early on in part one just you've got to know the melody of the tune that you're working on so if we look at the melody here and now we have all this chord tone knowledge. You can say, oh yeah, chord tones. It, yeah, it's not only chord tones, but it's dancing around them. So, oh, it landed right there on the chord tone up. That chord change, every time it's going to. There's a third of F major seven. The fifth of F major seven. The flat three of F minor changes perfectly right there where that chord changes. Okay. And now the three of E flat major. The flat three when it goes to minor. Okay, so just a little investigation there. We did that also with the scales series just to say, oh, if you learn all the actual core vocabulary of what the music, what is in the harmony, and then you investigate an actual composition, again, transcribe someone, the melody, etc. We're going to see how it all makes sense. That's the stuff I like to work on. Super, super absorbing, you know, in me instead of, just surface level learning obviously takes a lot obviously this is a big crazy lesson but if you're the right person for this if it's what you want i hope you find it helpful and hopefully it's the kind of thing that you will remember and think of for years when i was first taught this as uh it was called the um continuous chord tone exercise is what it was called when i was taught this and i did not understand really how to do it how to work on it it took me years to you know, add these rules to it for myself to make it palatable and make it work. And, um, but you know, hopefully years later, you'll be like, oh yeah, I got to work on the, that chord tone exercise series on this tune that I want to work on to, to get it down. And every new tune, I try to do it, you know, really seriously if I want to, if I want to actually be fluent over that. So if you need the resources to do this for any tune, you can get my chord tone arpeggio pack. It shows 12 chord types, the 12 arpeggio shapes that we need, all the different forms of them on, on the guitar. The 12 different chord types we need to be able to improvise over any jazz progression you can get that with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones it's just like the diagrams you saw on the screen in this video so hopefully that's useful for you for whatever chord you come across or whatever tune you're working on my bonus tip reminder here for you as a last thing that i want to say is just remember that tasteful phrasing is the absolute key when you get to that final exercise tasteful phrasing rhythmic space uh playing with motifs and ideas that relate to each other if you're playing only chord tones but you're doing using tasteful phrasing it's it can be so lovely so melodic so catchy so lyrical so the phrasing is the key so don't get frustrated with this i know a lot of students that work on this and then say oh it doesn't sound like i want it to it's just chord tones it's just chord tones but we need to unlock the ability to do something very simple just chord tones with nice phrasing and say ah that is that skill that I needed. Now you can add complexity on top of it after that. I post a new lesson video every single week. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care and happy practicing.